As I walked into the gym, the scent of polished wood floors and the distant echo of bouncing basketballs filled the air. I tugged uncomfortably at the blue and white cheerleading outfit that clung tightly to me, feeling completely out of place. The outfit was a far cry from the usual football gear I was accustomed to. You can't do this to me, Fred, I protested, my voice tinged with a mix of frustration and embarrassment. I'm the backup quarterback, Fred smirked, tossing a basketball from one hand to the other as he leaned against the gym wall. I think you misunderstood, Charlie. When coach said you were the backup, he meant a backup to whatever I need. And this weekend, my girlfriend is out of town, so you're her backup. He laughed, clearly amused by his own wit. I must say, you do make a very hot girl. You might want to consider staying that way. I felt my cheeks flush with heat. This is so unfair, I pouted, crossing my arms over my chest defensively. Ah, don't be like that, Fred chuckled, his tone condescending. Now make sure you cheer me on Friday night and just maybe I'll take you dancing. The idea of dancing with Fred was the last thing I wanted, but as I joined the other girls to work on the cheers, I couldn't help but feel a pang of defeat. My eyes watered slightly, but I blinked back the tears, determined not to show Fred any weakness. As the practice progressed, I found myself reluctantly admiring how synchronized and energetic the cheerleaders were. Their shouts and claps echoed through the gym, filling the space with vibrant life. Slowly, my initial resistance gave way to a grudging respect for their skills and dedication. By the end of the session, I was sweating and out of breath, but there was a newfound appreciation in my heart for what these athletes, because that's truly what they were, accomplished day in and day out. I realized that while the outfit might have been a joke to Fred, the spirit and camaraderie among the cheerleaders were anything but. As I changed back into my regular clothes, a resolve settled over me. I would talk to the coach about this mix-up, but not just to complain. I had a new plan. If I was going to be a part of this team, even temporarily, I would be the best darn backup cheerleader I could be, not for Fred, but for myself and for the team who had welcomed me without question. This weekend, I was going to cheer with all the energy I had, not because I was forced to, but because I wanted to give it my all, just like they did. The next day, I showed up early for practice, determined to learn the routines and not stick out like a sore thumb. The cheerleading captain, a tall, vibrant girl named Marcy, noticed my determination and took it upon herself to help me catch up. Okay, Charlie, let's break it down step by step, she said with a patient smile, as she guided me through the basic cheer moves. Her enthusiasm was infectious, and soon I found myself actually enjoying the practice. The movements were challenging, requiring agility and coordination that were different from what I was used to on the football field, but I was eager to learn. As practice wore on, I became more comfortable in the routines, and the other cheerleaders started offering tips and encouragement. Their acceptance transformed what began as a humiliating situation into a genuine bonding experience. I was no longer the football player in a cheerleader's uniform, I was part of the team. Friday night came quicker than I expected. The stands were filled with the roar of the crowd, the bright lights of the stadium casting long shadows on the field. My stomach churned with a mix of nerves and excitement, this was it, my debut not as a quarterback, but as a cheerleader. As the game started, I found myself swept up in the energy and spirit of the cheer squad. Each chant and cheer felt like a battle cry, each stunt and formation a strategic play in its own right. Surprisingly, I found myself cheering with genuine enthusiasm, driven by the crowd's energy and the team's spirit. During halftime, as we prepared for a particularly difficult routine, Marcy came over to me, her face beaming with pride. You're doing great, Charlie. Just remember, have fun with it. And fun I had. The routine went off without a hitch, and the crowd's reaction was electrifying. Cheering from the sidelines, I saw the game from a whole new perspective. It was exhilarating to be so involved in every moment, supporting my team not with passes and touchdowns, but with jumps, tumbles, and spirited shouts. After the game, as we gathered our things from the locker room, Fred came up to me, a sheepish expression on his face. Hey, Charlie, you were actually pretty awesome out there. I, uh, I guess I owe you an apology. I didn't think you'd take this so seriously. I shrugged, a smile tugging at my lips. Thanks, Fred, I didn't think I'd enjoy it this much either. Turns out, being a cheerleader isn't just about the outfit, it's about heart. Maybe you'll remember that next time. With a respectful nod, I left the locker room, my cheer shoes in hand, feeling proud and surprisingly fulfilled. As I walked under the bright stadium lights towards the exit, 
I realized that sometimes, stepping into someone else's shoes, literally, can open up a whole new world of understanding and adventure. This experience hadn't just taught me about cheerleading, it had taught me about resilience, acceptance, and the unexpected joy that comes from embracing a challenge head-on.